Hey everyone, I'm Eric. This is my wife, Julie. We are The Blended Life, and today we are talking about... Today we're going to talk about disrespectful stepkids, and not just them, but also as a step parent, how to handle how you react, how you show up. Uh, maybe giving you different perspective on what you can do to handle that. Mm -hmm. We're also going to talk a little bit about um, parent alienation, um, child support, and keeping your kids from the other family for due to child support issues. Or then keeping them from you. Yep. And then harassment from the bio mom. When you feel like the bio mom is just going after you, just seeking out you to out. Get you. <laughs> yeah. What do you do? How do you handle that? So that's what we got. All right. Coming up. Enjoy. Hey everyone, welcome back and we're going to jump right in. We have two questions from our listeners and social media participants and so if you guys want us to talk about anything or have a question or just want something brought up as a use it to start a conversation in your own home, you know, email us, message us, all the ways, get a hold of us and we're happy to um, address your topics on air. With that being said, here we go. Are you ready? Ready. Okay. So this person writes in and she says, I have two wonderful stepchildren. It took six years for me and their mom to speak and actually get in a relationship with me and my husband, but the kids are very disrespectful towards me. Mm. Me and my husband have two children of um, our own, one one-year-old and one seven-month-old. I often react and snap, and I raise my voice at his kids because of how disrespectful they are and the things that they say to me sometimes. And dad does not discipline them at all or t does not tell them to stop, but he just allows it. And I know it's my fault for reacting and getting upset or crying about it or getting my feelings hurt, but... I'm looking for a new way so that I don't have to feel that way anymore. I've been with them since the oldest was six years old, and now he is 12. And the youngest was three months old, and now he is six. Due to the disrespect, it often results in me and my husband fighting, and he blames me for reacting and being so sensitive. And I was wondering if I could have some advice from you guys. You guys are really awesome, and we listen to you, and we follow you on Instagram. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I hope to hear from you. God bless you and your family. Thanks. So Likewise. But here's your, I'm so excited to talk to you about this. <laughs> why, why me? <laughs> oh, I guess I'm the only one in the room, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> but the, here's the thing. I think that women especially, I know myself, mm. I've always gotten pegged as overreactive, super sensitive, all these things. And I don't think, I think women in general, but I personally have. So right. when you're a husband dealing with a woman you think is just, you know, hypersensitive and overreactive, what is your advice like for her if you were talking to her as just a friend you know being a man and, and knowing how that triggers you as a man to have that kind of wife right <laughs> I'm, I'm just genuine, you know like what would you my, say to this my biggest thing on this is actions create reactions let me say that again actions create reactions and her at her action of getting upset and flipping off, well, yeah, flipping out, flying off the handle. Maybe flipping off maybe too. Maybe flipping <laughs> off, <laughs> or or using likewise words. Inspired. Yeah. Um, not only is it creating a then, I'm just going to go extreme here. It's creating a hostile environment because she's angry. Now the kids are feeling upset and angry. Husband is feeling angry and um, probably defensive. But he's also now stuck in the middle of this because his wife is mad. His kids are misbehaving. 
Um, and he also probably feels a little bit victim because he hasn't disciplined the kids. His wife's mad at him and it puts him in a tough situation at that point. And I'm not Does saying he feel like a total loser. Uh, um, I sure hope so. I, well, I'm not <laughs> <you kidding? laughs> just kidding. <laughs> You're saying victim. I'm like, he's not a victim. Yeah, but that at that point, that's what you feel like. You're like, man, I am. I am in the doghouse. I'm getting in trouble. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm. Yeah, you're uh, not I'm, parenting. Yeah, well, maybe it's, maybe victim's <laughs> not the right word. You know how good I am with, with, with choosing like, these words okay, on the spot. Like, okay, but here's the thing. Responsibility. Right. Yeah. Taking responsibility for not parenting would be brilliant. Yeah. But that's not going to happen. No, but it's no. also, um, again, we've talked about you can only, you can only control yourself. In situations mm. like this, you can't control what your husband's going to do. You can't control what the kids are doing. All you can do Amen. is parent and control how you react to the situation. Now, flying off the handle, it's the easiest thing to do. Mm-hmm. I feel it. I do it every day internally. <laughs> and that's... It's just not helpful. It's not helpful, but it's also right. a very natural reaction to this. So is she in the wrong? No, not at all. But what she needs to do, in my opinion is learn how to um, get her feelings under control, learn how to um, work the situation with her husband in a team-like manner. Um, You know, basically, uh, like I said, all she can do is control herself in this situation and learn how to work with her husband Mm -hmm. and work with her husband to parent these kids so this isn't a, a normal occurring thing. This isn't something that pops up all the time. So right. how do they get something like that under control? I feel like you, as being a health life blended family coach, could help come up with some mm-hmm. type of, you know, is this is this part of your plan? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, don't give it all away up front. <laughs> But I, I, is, I truly have no idea what your plan looks like, no. but I feel like you could really help on something like yeah, this. Yeah, because this is exactly what you're talking about. Right. You have to do nothing changes unless right. you do. Right. So the greatest power you have, people always think that transformation, like I'll change when they change or mm-hmm. like their changed behavior will, it's all on them because I will act different if I don't have anything to react to. Right. And so we're constantly putting our power in other people and especially the stepkids or the or your children. When you're constantly handing your personal power to somebody else, you are living a life of depletion. Well, you're, you're also living a life of letting someone else or little you. kids control you That's and right. the outcome of everything. And I feel yeah. like that is such a tough place that a lot of people lived in, you know, or, yeah. or, or live in. And I have lived in that situation yeah. before where I'm like, well, it's out of my control. I can't control how that person acts or feels. Yeah. But what you don't stop and think about is I can completely control how I react to stuff like this. Absolutely. So. And how you show up differently will change absolutely everything. Right. Because if you're showing up differently, and I don't know, you can talk, you can talk to this or not, but be careful. <laughs> tread lightly think wisely i don't um, think much at all yeah. these days no but i don't know i i can use myself as an example because i've gone through you know schooling and my own coaching and um i don't know if you've seen a change in me mm-hmm. or not i'm hoping the answer is yes otherwise <laughs> Mentally, i'm just gonna go put the clothes sign on the door and <laughs> give up on yeah. life no for sure i have but the the power you have it's like when somebody changes mm-hmm. and you don't even have to use me in this ex- in an example but think of someone in your life who has an energy of just chill and happiness right that's not me so don't use me <laughs> <laughs> just kidding i aspire okay but think of like okay so you go to church mm-hmm. I, I i have someone in mind who i'm thinking about okay and every time i see her her energy is just happy uh-huh. and has like a huge heart for people okay. and she's so welcoming and you just want to give her a hug gosh you just described yourself look at you go but do you know who i'm talking about mm, i think so yeah she just is smiles yeah. and she's just warm. We're talking and about someone. We're talking energy. about someone at church. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. Who you're talking about. We talked to her at the end of church yesterday. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And I don't even have to tell you her name. I just yeah. you described her personality and you know exactly who that right. is. So that kind of personality, I mean, 
when people approach her, Mm -hmm. are people approaching her in anger and bitterness? Are people walking up to her with like, or is she inviting? Or or it, are they gratitude. or are they treading lightly when they walk up to her? Are they scared they don't what they're going to disappoint gonna, her? Yeah, they're, well, or they're going they're scared of what they're going to yeah. say that they're going to get a negative reaction because this person is probably down right. on life right now. And it's yeah, I see where you're going with this. So when people step to her to communicate, how they show up communicating to her is going to be very different than how they're going to show up and communicate to somebody who is just disgruntled and and has a chip on their shoulder and just hates life and always having a rough time. And that is the power you have. How you decide to show up for your family will totally shift how they come to you, come at you, interact with you, see you. Right. You know, you don't think of her and see her as a hard person. No, not at all. You think of her and you see her as an open, loving person. And that, affects your comfortability to she might be someone that you feel like hey i can really share yeah something or even if you're having a bad time or you're having like you said a hard time and you approach this person yeah you approach them and you almost immediately become you become part of their realm you become happy you You absorb that energy yeah which i'm not a big energy guy (laughs) You know, like people when it comes to stuff that like all, that, it's all God given. That's, you know, people I, get all weird about that. The, yeah. But it's where, like right. everything comes from God. If you believe that. Right. Then energy doesn't have to be a bad word. I'm not saying it's a bad word. I'm just saying it's a weird thing to. But it's but true. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Everything has energy. Right. Uh, Every, it does. Everything does. No, you're right. Even so, potatoes. Have you ever you lit up a l- l- light bulb with a potato? Okay. I have. Maybe you do that on a video so everyone can watch. Shock myself again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put shockers at you. Okay. Um, but so I think the greatest power you have is transformation. And mm-hmm. so if what you're doing isn't working. So because the, the question always is, you know what you don't want. Right. We are all very well aware of what we don't want. Okay, so what do you want? We don't look at that side of it. You can never have what you want if you don't know what you want. And so it's more useful to stop being like, "What? this is what I don't want. This is what I don't want to deal with. This is not who I want to be. I don't want to react this way. Okay, then spend time thinking about and considering how you do want to show up. You know, when your stepchildren are disrespectful to you, how do you want to react if How you're reacting is not working. In an ideal world, what would this reaction look like? Well, or what, what would... In your family circumstance. Yeah. Like, because here's the thing. If what you're doing isn't working and you keep doing it, that's the definition of insanity. You're not going to get different results. And you start feeling that insanity, right? Because you're only, you know, it's the reaction might be valid, but it's not helpful. Right then you're at an impasse with yourself. So you really have to make the decision to transform. Um, That is something if anybody wants help with transformation or how to show up differently and do things differently, communicate differently, um, shoot me an email. I can definitely talk to you about that and kind of explain coaching and you can see if it's right for you. Um, You can email me at becomingheardnow at gmail.com. That's becoming her now <laughs> at gmail.com. Exits are on your left and your <laughs> right. Know. Fasten your seatbelts. Put belts. your own mask on First. before you secure somebody else's. That's actually, a, um, I know we're kind of we joking about right now. We use this in right coaching now. all the time. You do? Yeah. Okay, I'm like, that's actually a really you good analogy because yeah. on an airplane, <laughs> that's what they tell you to do. Yep. But there's a reason for that. And the reason is. If you're dead, you can't help anyone. Or, yeah, or <laughs> you are passed out or something yep. happens. You have to take care of yourself and know yourself and be part of yourself before you can help others. Right. And a lot of people see that as a really selfish thing. Like, no, I should put on my little kid's mask before I put on mine to save them. But if... By the if time it, you're done doing that, you're dead. And then yeah, but it, or if you put your mm-hmm. mask on first and your kid does happen to pass out for a second from lack of oxygen you can at least recess them. If you're not, if you're passed out, your kid's not going to know how to recess you. Um, but just, just bigger picture, I think you guys, you know, you guys can all see this. Yeah. Um, you need to take care of yourself and you need to be all right before you can help others. And that's not yeah. a, I, I don't feel like that's a huge step away. Um, you know, in a blended family, of course, we want everyone to be good and everyone to help one another. 
Um, but you really need to learn how to deal with your own situation yep. and control yourself before you can do it with others. So, And that's great marriage advice. Oh, it's great life advice. It's great life advice. I'm giving good and life advice now. You know what's kind of interesting? Are you a life coach too? <laughs> At this moment I am. <laughs> you know, you guys, we joke around a lot about this stuff and, you know, lightly. Um, this is very unscripted. We I didn't even know what the topic was 10 minutes Four, 14 deny. minutes just ago, <laughs> you print the stuff out, but we don't, we never discuss this stuff ahead of time. So this is very just off the cuff, you know, um, yep. as far as our blended family podcast goes, we are not, I mean, you're a professional health and life coach, but as far as being like therapist and advice givers, you know, this is very much just take it with a grain of salt, take what works for you. Don't what, what doesn't work for you, but let us know what you guys think because we are in this with you guys, um, trying to help you guys, trying to help us. I mean, we don't live any perfect blended family <laughs> lifestyle. Nope. You know, we are, but but this podcast, uh, we ho hope it helps you guys. But at the end of the day, it's really helping us. You know, we are, we learn from our own stuff with you guys, um, your comments, your, your write-ins, um, you know, just let us know where you guys are at. So I just wanted to put that out there because- Good. We're funny about a lot of this stuff, but yeah. it's just totally unscripted. So we're trying yeah. just to work through it. Yeah. So um, what I, my advice for, or a different perspective, maybe we just say a different perspective okay. instead of advice. I don't know. But a different perspective for this woman who's just being disrespected. And I get the husband's point of view, right? You're feeling like you're stuck in the middle. And right. that's a lot of pressure. You've right. got kids who you're like not super proud that they're, I'm sure you have Acting some sort away. of, like, if your children were disrespectful to me, you would feel some sort of way about that. There'd be some, there'd be a bit of guilt involved. And it's like, either is it because I can't control them or because I'm not controlling them? But at the end of the day, I mean, unless we're blind, deaf, and, you know, not just not paying attention, like, I feel like you should be able to see that and acknowledge that to some point. So. Yeah. Um, this seems more like a parenting issue, not even the kids. The kids need to get parented yeah. in a way that show respect in the household. And that's that's kind of a rule that we have in our household, you know, like our kids are going to respect everyone in the household. It's just almost common, a common sense thing that we teach them. Like that's you, true. you just respect people in life. You're not better than anyone. You're no worse than anyone. You are all human beings. You are all God's creation. And valuable. And, yeah, and valuable. And, and I actually worthy. had that that talk with my son. Our our kids are at uh, at church camp right now, mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, going there, I said, you know what? Just because you're going to church camp, doesn't mean that every kid there is gonna be all holier than thou. Doesn't mean that they are gonna all be on their best behavior. Yeah. And the same goes for you. But I want you to go there and set an example. I want you to go there and. Um, just because one kid's doing a certain thing doesn't mean that you need to follow suit. You know, right. you're going to see, it's, this is just like going to school. These are all, just because it's church Christian camp doesn't mean that it's going to be Everyone just Everyone fits into some box. It's exactly. It's yeah. going to be some perfect formed kumbaya camp. You guys are all children. You guys yeah. are all kids. You're all human beings from yeah. all walks of life. Some of them have been doing church since they were little kids and are pastors' sons and daughters. Some yeah. of them are just going for the very first time. Some like, of them don't even know God, and parents are just like, things are opened up. I hear about this <laughs> camp. Send them in. Goodbye. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so that, I mean, that's really where we all are. Just because we are one way or another or fit into this box or don't, doesn't mean that there isn't always something that we can work on. And I think that starts with us as parents yeah, for needing sure. to get ourselves together, get ourselves under control, put on our mask first, and then work on the situation together. What works best for our family? Yeah, most definitely. And so the husband's point of view of feeling that disappointment and pressure and guilt and then having an unhappy wife, which is an unhappy life. I know. That's why you had such a good Father's I Day I had yesterday. the best Father's Day of my love life. It. Um, But, and then try, like, I think your head explodes at some point. Like, mm -hmm. I think spouses just don't even know how to handle it. So the natural thing is to volley all that to the other person, like tag your it, you yeah. take all this guilt, shame, <laughs> right. like I don't, I don't want it here. You take it. Now I feel better about now it. Now I feel better. You yeah. get it all. Yeah. Um, and that's such a, don't you feel like that's a very common thing to do? 
Yes. I think that a lot of people see that as gaslighting, Yeah, <laughs> you know, by definition where it's like you're upset by something and then the person's like making you feel crazy for being upset. Mm-hmm. I have lots of stories like that <laughs> in my past. Um, so I think the way you diffuse a situation is you have to decide how you do want to react. So if you don't want to get upset and you want to remain calm, then you need to help yourself by how am I going to do this. And behavior change and patterns and habits take practice, right? So just because you decide you're going to do this, you actually have to start doing it and it takes practice. And so one of the things you can do is just notice your physical body. When you're being disrespected by your stepchildren, notice how, you know, maybe your stomach gets tight. Maybe you start feeling like hot in your body. Dry mouth. Yeah, things can happen. You can start shaking. Like your body physically reacts to everything, right? That's how God made it. So take notice and then that let that trigger you to be like, okay, I'm going to stop and I'm going to be easy and I'm going to take a deep breath. And how do I want to react in this situation? Do I want to just remove myself? You know, do I want to calmly say, hey, maybe you try coming at me a different way. There's nothing wrong with telling your stepchildren if they're disrespecting you, like, "Mm, maybe you try that again a different way. Or, you know, if this is how you're going to treat me, then maybe you don't get that ride to your friend's house you want. Because we are in a two-way street relationship here. You don't get to, you can have conversations with your stepkid and not have them be emotionally charged, right? Not come back at them with attitude and anger and venom, but come at them with just like a calm energy and maybe you remove yourself for a little bit and then readdress it and say, you know, I I didn't appreciate that interaction at all. And if you want to be okay in this house with me and you want me to go to the store for you, take you places, cook dinner for you, do laundry for you, then we need to work out a different way of how we're talking to each other because this isn't okay. And and own your part too, right? One evil doesn't deserve an evil reaction, right? So if they're disrespectful and you're disrespectful right back to them, you are now part of the problem. And you're, you're reinforcing their disrespect to you. If you, if they think you're a bitch and then you react like a bitch, they're like, see, she's a bitch. So you have to break that cycle and you are the adult and you can do it. Um, so there's nothing wrong with removing yourself also, or just taking a deep breath or just having no reaction. Be committed to not reacting. Be committed, no matter what you're feeling inside not to say anything back until you can be calm. And start there. That's a place to start. Think about how you want to react. What is going to, if you don't want to yell and scream and be venomous, then don't, but have a plan. Part of it is just knowing how you're going to handle it. So that's only something you can come up with yourself. Journaling really helps um, when you need to get things out. So if you were really disrespectful, respected, maybe you start a journal about, kids disrespect and then you write it down and let it go and then address it calmly later but at least you get it out in a healthy way that isn't going to make husband angry because that just makes it worse like you never feel worse than when your husband's like mad at you <laughs> and the kids are mad at you and, and everyone's, everyone's mad and you're fucking mad at everyone yeah, everyone's mad there it is look guys so F then you're, the everyone's day. just mad and that's now the cycle so it's, you know, it's just thinking about ways to get it out in a respectful way, in a good way. Right. And then deciding how you want to show up and what that looks like. And right. then I think another piece to this is that if you're being disrespect disrespected, but you can't go to your spouse about it. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that, that's a really hard yeah, spot. What, and what, 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 how come? Well, because if you're being disrespected mm-hmm. by, say, your son was disrespectful to me. Right. And you couldn't come to and me. And I it. come to you. Oh. And this is our pat. This is not our pattern. Right. But I, for example sake, mm-hmm. right? If I don't feel like you're a safe place for me, where right. it's like your son disrespected me and I'm really upset about it. Like but I'm you not can't okay. Talk to me about it. 
I don't feel like I can talk to you about it because every time I have talked to you about it, you get defensive. You tell me why it's my fault and how I did things wrong. Go all like, Kyle on you and punch a hole in the wall. Yeah. In the like, ceiling. I go ceiling Or you get mad today. at me or you give me the silent treatment. Like if, if I come to you and you do not see me, do not hear me, turn it back around on me and right. make it my issue, um, whether you think it is or not, it is you're supposed to be a safe place for your spouse to land. Right. Regardless. Right. And some things are hard. It's right. hard when you talk about somebody's kid. When your yeah. kid's being talked about, that's hard. W- one so, of the things... Oh, keep going. Keep no, going. I was just saying, like, that's the piece where you have to work as... And that's a marriage issue. Yeah. That isn't a parenting issue. That isn't a step-parenting issue. Um, if you don't have great communication that you can talk about absolutely anything, because regardless if you're a blended family or not, Marriage has hard conversations that just have to be had, even if you were a natural family and your kids were all your own. For sure. Um, And so it's really important to be super good at just seeing your spouse, whether you agree with them or not, is really a non-issue. They just want to be heard. They don't even necessarily want you to fix it. They just want to be able to feel like... Do you see me? Do you hear right. me? Acknowledge me. Thanks. Well, to me, that is a good part. That's something I learned a long time ago. That is a very good part of communication. Yeah. Isn't always talking. Just because it's called communication doesn't mean you have to talk. One of the best parts of communication that I have learned is to stop and listen. And you're very good at this, too. But being able to, as I'm venting to you or you're venting to me, stopping and listening what the person's saying and not arguing the point with them as it's going because sometimes the point gets made before the conversation goes on. And if we can stop and listen, like you're saying right now, being heard a lot of the time is just what people want. They want to know that they're heard and just at the end of it, acknowledge like, all right, I hear you. I hear what you're saying. I'll do, I'll do whatever I can to work on it. You know, not fixing. And that that's a, that's a problem I got myself into. Uh, um, into trouble a lot is I was always trying to fix the problem. And, you know, I'm sure any of you guys listening to me, it's a, it's a guy thing. We want to fix problems. You know, we're, we're problem solvers and, um, it's gotten me in trouble over the years. Um, you know, nothing crazy, but, um, it's just learning to stop and listen and hear our spouse. And, um, just because it's a, a guy thing wanting to f- solve problems, it's a very good thing for women to do as well. Like, Absolutely. you know, there's sometimes when I talk to you and you just stop and you listen and it just helps. You know? Yeah, for sure. That's good. You can't be a good communicator and a bad listener. No, it's, it's, like it's only half of, can't. it's only half the battle. Yeah. That's yeah. a really, really good point. And on that note, let's go back to this disrespectful stepchildren. It might be more I useful. Want to go to back to them? They're disrespectful. <laughs> but to for to help this woman out, right? right? It might be more useful to get to the heart of why. Mm-hmm. Why is there disrespect? Why are they specifically disrespecting you? And that can be a conversation you have around family dinner. Again, teach kids to sit through uncomfortable conversations because you know what? They're going to be married someday, and that's their life. Well, they're going to need to know how to do this themselves, yep. but also. If kids never get called out on things, kids aren't ever going to feel responsibility, the, the responsibility, the guilt, the shame of any and of accountability, it. And you accountability. Accountability. Learn let them let them have a safe place to learn accountability, but also let them feel some humility. Like if yeah. if you're calling them out like, dang. Yeah. Stumble stepping up. And it's good to do this as a team. Yeah. Because if you and husband are both sitting down and you're together as a team, they don't get to go to one. It without earshot of the other and play two against one. Right. And so if you kind of do this as a united front, as a team, then it is everyone's hearing the same thing. They don't get to s- tell a little bit of this information to one parent, withhold information to the other, and then like live in miscommunication bliss because everyone has half truths, right? They have to actually be present. And so if this is a continual cycle, once you're calm about it, it would be useful to sit down with with these kids and maybe individually or maybe all together and just say, hey, let's I'm curious what what this disrespect is about. Like, why are you so angry? What is what is making you so resentful or angry or bitter 
and ask them. They're old enough, especially at 12. They might not have all the words, but they do understand anger, you know, and they do know disrespect is bad. So you can ask the 12 year old, especially like, hey, what's going on? How does this make you feel? You know what no. I mean? No, you don't want to know feelings. I feel like a good I thing. I want to know why. Like the feeling is the anger that's coming through. But I'm more interested in like. But if like, kids can feel why they're getting like this and what they're feeling that makes them get like this, if mm-hmm. they can talk through A to Z, don't you think that would help them mm-hmm. get to why? See what I did there? Um. Yes. The thing is that you can jump from feeling to feeling and never articulate what's really going on. Okay. Like, I feel threatened by you because you're not my mom and I miss my mom and I want Definitely my mom. Definitely not your mommy. You're not my mommy. I'd be your daddy. Okay, but that's not a feeling. Okay. That's an actual, like, thought pattern. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying? I see what you're saying, yeah. So I feel angry. I feel jealous. I feel hurt. I feel, well, why? Mm-hmm. Why any of those emotions? And so instead of emotion hopping, like, I think it's good to definitely let kids express their emotions and this is how I feel, but why? Because you can't fix anything if you don't know what's going on. Truth. So if I feel like, um, if I feel suicidal, that's not, uh, that's a great place to feel like, okay, I hear you, but why? Like, what makes you get to that spot? So if there's 10 steps to the road to suicide, then let's deal with each step and figure out how we can get rid of them. So you don't ever get to that highest rung, right? So it is a thing where you it's really super important. And if you can help kids do this, then they'll be better in relationships. They'll be better humans because when they're living on their own, they're able to put... Because uh, how many times do you feel a certain way and you're like, I have no idea why? Right. Or you can't get... You, you can't even think about it. And it keeps you stuck. Mm-hmm. You can't let go of something you don't know. Can't let go of something you don't know. Can't work through something you don't know. You so can't grasp it. Yeah, it's super important. Anyway, interesting. Um, you're, so, you're so smart. Oh my god! So gosh. funny, and smart, and tall. That. Let's shake it. Tall oh, for shake. sure. The <laughs> other two questionable. What movie was that from? <laughs> I know at least one of you know. So funny, cute, and tall. Let's shake it. You've told me a thousand times. I always, yeah. I don't know. I love it. it's one of my favorite movies. Step Brothers? No. No. Oh, um, um, Knights. What's it called? Um, no S Knight. That movie. That's all I know. Comment. Comment if you know what movie we're talking about. Anyways. Okay. That's a, <laughs> I have a tick. Um, okay. Second question. How do I get bio mom to quit contacting me? I've been married to my husband for four years. She's the mother to my 14-year-old stepdaughter that we don't see anymore. Oh, bummer. From, she says, al- alienation at its finest. From my husband's point of view, she got pregnant for the money. His family is very well off. This past year has been hard on us financially, and he fell behind in child support. Your favorite topic. (laughs) When, with that, she stopped sending her daughter. Oh, so it was a money, it was a money pawn thing, huh? That's a bummer. Gosh. Okay, hang on. There's a lot more to read. I know. I know. Hang on. She never made visits easy before and withheld her for illogical reasons. Recently, she started calling and having the phone on speaker while calling my husband horrible names and yelling at him. She would have our stepdaughter, my stepdaughter there to tell him how she actually feels. I'm not kidding about the alienation. My husband finally said enough is enough. I'm done making her come here, stepdaughter. Right. And being put in the middle of this, it's not fair on her or any of our children. I don't agree. I was a child of divorce and he wasn't. But she isn't my kid, so really what can I do? I feel horrible for my stepdaughter. I went through this as a child and it's awful. Same girl. I feel you. I have a terrible relationship with my bio mom. I hate that she's I hate that my stepdaughter is in this position. I want her to feel loved regardless of where she is and who she's loved by. We had a fantastic relationship with her until this past year. At this point, Bio Mom found me on Facebook, my business pages. Okay. I'm like, do we all know the same people? At this point, Bio Mom has found me on Facebook, my business pages, TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, 
and publicly posted my husband behind my husband. Oh, and publicly posted my husband's behind on child support, has posted his court records, said many things about me. I've blocked everything, yet she keeps creating new fake profiles. I've changed my number. I've taken my business offline, stopped Jeez. posting anything on social media, and still get her tagging me in things. I don't know how to get her to quit. I've talked to her. I've asked her to quit. I've been reasonable. I've gray rocked her. What's that? I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully it's what I think it is. <laughs> I don't know what else to do. I see a therapist weekly. I'm just over this. Yeah. My head is all over the place, and I'm sorry, but why can't this woman just let me live my damn life? I get that. I mean, gosh, you know, like, I'm like, there's so much going on here. If you're able to, my advice just advice, unsolicited advice, or is it solicited? I don't know. How do you consider this? <laughs> My advice. I mean, in people situ- ask. People in, in are situ- asking for. I know. Gosh, this is like. Input. It's just your perspective. Your my input. perspective on this is document all of this. Document as much as you can, and like, look at she's affecting your business. She's affecting your household. She's affecting mental health. Mental. There's so much that she's affecting. Stepdaughter I mean, that alienation. That's a real thing. Just all of it. Yep. My advice is, you know, it sounds like you guys have tried, 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 and what she does is just unburies you wherever you try to go and hide. You can't, you can't live, you can't be free. I'm like, get a restraining order, because if you get a restraining order, because she, it's, it's she's seeking you out. She's not just like, this isn't little easygoing interactions. She's physically, uh, mentally verbally inter- internetally <laughs> seeking you out like this isn't okay she's affecting your livelihood by going after your business and the household i'm like get a restraining order because then if she does this type of stuff she's gonna have to stop doing this stuff then if she does then there is consequences but in order to be able to get a restraining order for something like this you need to have it all documented um also if you're able to um it sounds like you guys have gone through a little bit of a rough time who hasn't, but if you guys are able to seek legal co- counsel, um, talk to a lawyer about something like and this. And pay for like one hour, right? Yeah. You don't just go don't in, pay go. for an hour of their time, have all the, like have as much as you can with you, like all the proof that you've collected, all the documentation, all the questions, like go in there very prepared because you got one hour. So and they're strict know about exactly that exactly what you want, what, you know, but that's is great advice too, because we're not attorneys also. So, um, you're, you know, what kind of proof and the parent alienation, uh, some States don't really like that and they will do something about it also. So what do you think? Go get, go try it. Go for I document would, it all and get a I mean, order. if, if all the things, cause that's all the things I would do is just block, block, block. Right. But you can't, I mean, but now she's creating fake accounts, which she's, is super whoops, sorry, put, like, you know, all of the time and energy that is wasted on spying on people and manipulating the truth and creating fake accounts and using, you know, using your children's accounts to go spy on someone to create problems. That is something that happens all the time. I'm going to, they, I mean, kids have to give their passwords, right, to both parents. And so what do people do with that? They go spy and create problems. And so if it is affecting you that much and you've done all the normal things, the next level up is seeking legal action and seeing what your options are. And attorneys, family law attorneys are really well versed. I mean, how many divorces have happened over Facebook? More than you would like to know. So attorneys, my point is, are really well versed on how social media world affects um, marriage, divorce, blended families, child rights, things like that. So um, ask around, do your research to find the best fit for you as far as a family law attorney that can guide you and pay for an hour of their time. Because what that will do is it'll put to rest And he hope like either one or two things, he's going to be like, yes, I feel like I can help you with this. Or she will be like, let's take some legal action and get a restraining order. Or we'll be like, well, you don't have enough evidence. We can't really prove this. It's all circumstantial. And then it's just time to let bygones be bygones. Like it is just time to, if that's the case and you can't, you don't have a legal case, then it is time to lay it down. 
understand that she is going to, you can't control her unless legally maybe, but if these things haven't worked, then you just don't respond. Maybe you print it out, start a file for later, but you kind of just make this pact with yourself like she's crazy, she's got issues, her issues are her issues, I'm not going to live my life according to her issues. So you just lay it down, you let it go, you recognize it and you release it. And you be free from it. And so every time you start getting bugged, you have to consciously start this new mindset of like her problem, not mine. You know, business, you should be able to do something if she's doing, if she's messing with your business. But then again, what proof do you need? So that's where you would ask an attorney. You know, if if printing out something from a fake profile, you can't link the two somehow, well then ask somebody what proof do I need? Please tell me what I need to collect so that I can get the restraining order I need at least for my business in place because this is ridiculous. Um, And I know money is always an issue. This might be a time to call in a family favor or borrow money or whatever it is. The parent alienation thing having to do with child support, I mean, there are no words. I, I too am a child of divorce and I Because I lived that life, I know how important it is to have both parents present and accounted for. Good parents, right? Like loving, present, good parents. No one walks on water. No parent is perfect. We all make mistakes, right? We don't handle everything perfectly. But if you have a good parent that's available and willing and wants to be there, kids should have that opportunity. And so I think this is like the highest form of evil. Also, I mean, I I take issue with your husband being like letting her go. I agree. I like also fight, fight for your, fight fight for your, your kid. kids. Yeah. I, uh, you know. Punching the mics here. Getting angry. Just it, well, I mean, letting your child go is a form of abandonment, right? On some level, some that's level. going to affect your kid and come off as a form of abandon- abandonment, especially when you gaslight them and like, well, and it might not doing now. this for your good. No, you're doing this because you don't want to deal with it or because it's too hard or because, you know, and and later down the road, it's going to affect them later down the road. They're going to see it and it's going to be yeah. like, dang it. Dad yeah. Let me go. They, Dad didn't fight for me. And that doesn't matter. Like if you're a kid or you're 35, right? Whenever dad lets you go is really a heartbreaking thing on some level. And so um, I get though, like what happens if your child doesn't want to be there and... Or it's hard for them to because they're stuck in between a rock and a hard place and it's just, it's so much work for them to be there because they've been so brainwashed and fed all this garbage and every time they talk to you they have to be on speakerphone and they just can't breathe yeah when they're with you like I, I get where he's coming from I get that feeling it's hard but it's but it's one of those things that as parents we have to overcome that feeling we have to overcome so much negativity to get there and it it just blows my mind that so many parents care so much like this woman does about the lady who wrote in that this that this <laughs> It's pathetic how much time and effort's put in, right? Like, do to, you not have a job or a hobby? creating other accounts, <laughs> to spying, it's to... so pathetic. Airing laundry in the streets of other people on social media. Um, if this Why? is you, if you're listening and you are like, man, I can relate to this. I kind of do this stuff to my ex. Just knock it off. Like, please, like, not even... I don't care. It doesn't affect me. It doesn't affect me, but knock it off for (laughs) do something fun. For your kids' sake. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you're gonna get over it. The other parents gonna get over it. But these kids have to get brought up with this and this affects the kids as they go, as they go, as they go. And um it's just it's so heartbreaking to see this happen. Yeah. Um and how do the how do people come up with the time for this? I mean I understand, like, if you don't have a life, but go get one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, figure it out. Um, why we care so much about our exes and tearing them down and destroying them and winning. At the end of the day, none of us win. Only our kids lose when we're in this mindset. And that yeah. just, it's just such a bummer to me. So, yeah. Sorry for well, my and rant, no, but, but then they gaslight too. Like, they're the ones they learn spying. It. Not the kids, but, but the, the kids will learn this behavior. The kids learn this behavior, and they're they're raised up to be mean girls or mean boys. Like 
genuine like the people we all hated in high school. Yeah. Um. But here's the deal too. It's like they go because they go and create issues, spying and creating problems, which none of their business. And then they turn it around and they gaslight like <laughs> it was all the other person. <laughs> yeah. Or like, like tell me this isn't. Yeah. You know, like, like they don't take responsibility that what they're doing is affecting these kids at all. Right. Like this toxicity, this engagement in spying and creating issues that doesn't affect the kids, but you know, whatever this poor mom's putting out there sure does affect the kids. Yeah. And it's kind of like, that's so back ass words, like completely like illogical, wild craziness. Yeah. And, um, and so if uh, this dad though, I would say, don't give up on your 14 year old daughter. And I think that's the stepmom's point of view too. In children of divorce, we have a heart for this because it's like, we understand how much, even though it's hard situation going between two homes and it's, you know, I always really appreciated that my dad fought for me. You know, my dad didn't just let my mom take me six hours away and never see me again, which he could have. But and up till my 18th birthday, you know, he fought for me to go see him. And that always on some level made me really feel loved, you know, regardless if I wanted to go or not, or if I felt like I had friends there or not, or. Was it so much at the time or was it later on in life that you're like, mm, no, I, did feel I loved. remember telling my dad in my teens, like thanking him. I thanked my dad, like, thank you for fighting for me. Like, right. thank you. Cause I always. My stepdad and I never had a father daughter relationship like you would like a typical we had we never connected as a father daughter um, and I have always had a really tough relationship with my stepdad um, and so I never had that need meant right. met you know I think we all need mom and dad and so I was just grateful for the opportunity that to know my dad um, and you know I really loved my dad when I was there you know like right. I I I saw, I wanted that so bad. I had such a lacking of it with my mom um, that when I was with my dad, I just, it's all I wanted. I just wanted to soak it all up. And I was so grateful I could because some parents just take their kids away from their other parent or some, some parents, you know, alienate some parents. Well, a lot of it comes down to manipulation too. Like they manipulate them out of wanting to see their parents. Yep. And that is... Again, that's such a, like, what a terrible thing. Encourage encourage your kids to love yeah. and respect their other family. Even if you don't love and respect the other side, the, the other biological parent and the other step-parent, encourage your kids to because at the end of the day, that other parent is half your kid. Whether you like the other step-parent or not, they're still there to parent your kid in one way or another in greatness yeah. or not so greatness one one way or another your kids are gonna learn from this person either to be like them or not be like them yeah you know to behave like them or not to behave like them but at the end of the day we can't control who our ex is with so the best thing for your kids is teach them to respect them so at least when they go to the household the other house it makes them easier and yeah. i do the same thing with my kids you do the same thing with your kids like we might not be in the greatest terms or relationships with our exes, but at the end of the day, it's always our goal to have our kids respect the other household, and love, love the other them. household. And I agree. It's only best and it might for not them. feel recipi- reciprocated over there. Reciprocated. Re- that thing. <laughs> reciprocated. <laughs> Recipi- Reciprocations. Reciprocated. But- yeah. <laughs> no, it's let your kids be so free important. to love everyone. It's so important. That's right. In, in us, by uh, if we were to tell them not to, or go over there and misbehave, or go over there and don't love them, or put them on speakerphone because we want to hear everything that they say, or badmouth them when they're not around, all that does is puts negativity In into our kids' minds, sad. It's sad. and it just hurts our kids. It's not That's hurting right. the other parents. You know, the other parents might be heard about it but it doesn't come from the kid it comes from us yeah you know well and I mean? that ultimately and lives inside the kids it doesn't live in us exactly. it, it, it goes away us. in us yeah but it lives in the kids forever and that's a really big responsibility that a lot of angry parents don't 
own. No, and and, and continue sad. to do. Yeah. So my thought in this situation is, the woman writing in, really like she she sees a problem. She yeah. Meet, she sees that it's not okay. Yeah. And she's kind of like, well, it's not my, it's not my, you know. Yeah, but it's not my battle. But I feel like she needs to talk with her husband, have a serious talk, and needs to come up with a plan come up with a plan with him to be like you know what get her back this isn't okay yeah and this is why yeah and i know you might be sick of it but i'm here with you to help you fight this battle i'm your teammate we're gonna do this together and and don't let money ruin relationships oh gosh no it's not so you're not the only people who've ever fallen short on child support you're not the only people who have hidden financial hardships you know you're not the only people who have you know, back child support that they need to pay and get on a payment plan. Gosh, even the IRS, right, you can get on a payment plan and figure it out. And we all owe money to somebody. So don't let the money factor rule in your seeing your daughter. Um, and so not a I bit, would, because also if or, fight that. Not but here's the other thing, too, even if that happen, even if they that. own child support, it, just because they're not seeing the kid at that point because they let go. Does it mean that the child support stops? Well, no. And also, just because you're not paying child support doesn't absolve you of the right to see your child. No, not at all. But right? also, what, <laughs> what will happen, too, is now you're not seeing your kid. If this woman's that crazy, she's going to be like, well, he doesn't even see the kid anymore. He hasn't seen him in months. Take him back to court. I want more child support. I want more child support. I want more um, custody. I want 100% custody. And yeah, that child that. support is now going to double, triple, quadruple, yeah. whatever you were at. Before. So you got to work on that and not let that ruin rule or ruin your life. You know, you I, I don't it's not easy to contact child support. I hear. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. They're open for like two hours a day. And one of those hours they're on lunch break and the other hours they're with clients that are there in meetings. Yeah. That have booked out meeting two years prior. So, so. It's, it's amazing to me when you walk into a child support office. The people that you deal with in the child support office aren't present. The lady, the secretary I think I've lady. Seen this. You have like a screen, isn't no, there? A like, screen. It's like twelve inches of bulletproof glass or something. Uh, <laughs> it's the craziest thing. And then they go put you in a cubicle, like to. It's the just. It's the wildest experience. And then they're only open. Literally, I, I kid you not. For only a couple hours a day, at least here in California, it's just. It's a. It's Mr. Toad's wild adventure. And then at the end of the ride, you go to hell. You know, <laughs> it's, it's 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 Mr. Toad's wild adventure. It's totally what it is. So I'm, but you know, like obviously your relationship with your children more important than anything. Everything is your children. So. um you know, and even giving kids the choice to be like, yeah, I don't want to live here anymore. If there's abuse, right, or there's, like, bullying or there's neglect, I'm not talking about those cases, but I'm talking about kid just doesn't, like, personality conflicts and it's just hard and I don't have the stuff and I'm bored over there. God, if I have to hear bored one more, like, <laughs> I'm bored. Well, shit, that's childhood. Everyone's bored. Go back yeah. in the 1920s and tell me kids. Kids weren't bored. They actually worked all day I also know. in the farm or whatever. Kids don't. Anyway, Bring don't get me started. Um, but, you know, if your kid just doesn't want to be there for reasons that aren't neglect, abuse, bullying, then you should not ever just given to their whims they have to learn good life lessons and these life lessons are before them for a reason and maybe it is going to make them stronger for something else that they will face in life I don't think things that are accidents right I don't think that our kids have parents that the parents that they are given are the parents they are meant to have I don't think it's a happy accident right so I think that you're meant to be in these kids lives for a reason and you have something to offer and not being there oftentimes it does more harm than good. On that note. On that note. We're done. <laughs> drop the mic. <laughs> Thank you guys for being with us. We, Like I said a little while ago, we truly just appreciate you guys being here, helping us work through things, helping you work through things. Write into us. Let us know what you think. Uh, subscribe to us. Um, our days are a little screwed up right now we're just with your with your coaching business and and my business we're just we're a little over the place so apologize for this coming out a day late 
yesterday was Father's Day, and it was also a crazy day. It was we the just, best day. It was, it was, you had the best Father's Day ever. I really did. Um, but thank you guys for being here. So leave that like, uh, subscribe, comment, leave us ratings, and whatever. Or don't, you know, just thank you for being here. So <laughs> bye, bye, you guys. <laughs>